you open up the big old book of horror movie lore, it states in big, bold letters that, well, people will die. It's no surprise that survivors are therefore remembered so fondly. Well, some of them are anyway. I'm Tilly from What Culture Horror, and these are the 10 horror movie survivors that everyone forgets about. Number 10, Jeff Ridenour. Saw. The Saw franchise has generally circled back to those few victims lucky enough to survive a jigsaw trap, with the seventh movie even introducing a support group for jigsaw survivors. But there's one survivor rarely discussed in all but the most hardcore quarters of the fandom, and that's Jeff Ridenour. He was the man who detectives Trap and Singh rescued from having his neck drilled to death in the very first Saw movie. We know that Jeff survived the trap, but beyond that we know nothing about him, neither what happened to him post-rescue or why he was even targeted by jigsaw saw in the first place. Some fans have speculated that he may have been the dentist who liked to play with kids too much, mentioned by Tap earlier in the film, given that the chair he's strapped to could indeed be a dentist chair, but this hasn't ever actually been confirmed. Nevertheless, Jeff was originally supposed to return in an early draft of Saw 4's script to spectate the game being unwittingly participated in by FBI agents Peter Strahm and Lindsay Perez, but for reasons unknown, this was scrapped. Number 9. Ted Bowen, Friday the 13th Part 2. Horror movie survivors don't come much more unexpected than Friday the 13th Part 2's jokester Ted Bowen. On paper, he's basically a neon signposted slab of meat fit for Jason Voorhees' machete, and there's little doubt in the minds of first-time viewers that he's absolutely going to end up dead. In a strangely subversive move, though, Ted accidentally saves his own life by leaving the camp for the night and heading out to a bar, where he proceeds to get blind drunk and is ultimately unable to drive himself back to Camp Crystal Lake. To hammer the point home, we even hear Ted asking about any after-hours bars nearby, which is the last we ever see or hear of Ted in this series. Clearly, he didn't go back to camp, so there's absolutely nothing to suggest he was killed by Jason, even if his storyline just ends. Justice for Ted, goddammit! Number 8. Isabella Hudson, Final Destination 2 the Final Destination franchise has done a practically industrious job of tying up almost every dangling loose thread, whereby practically everyone who has attempted to cheat Death's plan has wound up dead in the end, one way or another. And because she's a relatively minor character in the context of the franchise, it's easy to forget one person who Death actually left untouched, Final Destination 2's Isabella Hudson. Isabella is a heavily pregnant woman who survived the opening Route 23 pileup, and who protagonist Kimberly attempts to save late in the movie, believing that preventing her death and allowing her child to be born will break the cycle of death. Though Kimberly is successful and Isabella both gives birth and survives, it's also revealed that she never actually died in the opening premonition sequence, so was never part of Death's plan to begin with. This makes Isabella extremely unique in the franchise, as she's the only significant character featured in a premonition who isn't eventually killed. We never see Isabella again and are left to assume she lives a happy, regular life until Death comes for her in a more conventional way. Number 7. Justin, Event Horizon Paul W.S. Anderson's cult classic sci-fi horror Event Horizon willfully attempts to trip up the viewer with its abundance of grotesquely surreal imagery. It's easy to forget then that in addition to Stark and Cooper being rescued by the salvage team in the final seconds of the movie, their comrade Justin is also alive. Stark's fake rescue nightmare moments before the actual rescue sees the apparent salvage team mention that Justin has suffered massive injuries from his traumatic encounter with the Event Horizon's gravity drive, and consequent attempt to kill himself, but confirms him to be alive. When the nightmare is over and we cut to reality, we can see Justin in his stasis tank, seeming to confirm that the report was accurate, and not a mere fabrication in Stark's mind. Considering the utter hell he's put through in the film, it's easy to miss that he's implied to survive, even if he'll clearly never be the same again. 6. Ali Ray, Paranormal Activity 2 The Paranormal Activity movies tend to end with the few surviving characters being brutally murdered, though Paranormal Activity 2 did see the unexpected survival of Daniel Ray's teenage daughter, Ali. Ali is away on a school trip when her father and stepmother Christy are killed by Christy's possessed sister Katie, with an end of the film title card simply explaining that Ali came home to find Daniel and Christy's dead bodies. Because of the series' tendency to focus on a new set of characters in each new movie, Ali was quickly lost in the shuffle. And though she did make a cameo appearance in Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones three years later to dispense some advice to the new protagonists, the film's placement as a spin-off meant fans of the second film never actually saw it, 
It grossed barely half of Paranormal Activity 2's box office, in fact. While a seventh Paranormal Activity film is currently in the works, given that we last saw Ali over seven years ago, it's pretty unlikely that the new sequel will bring her back into the fold once again. Number 5. Robert Morse, Alien 3 Everybody of course remembers that Alien 3 ends with Ripley making the ultimate sacrifice by throwing herself into the furnace before the Xenomorph Queen can burst out of her. But many forget about the movie's sole survivor, prisoner Robert Morse, played by Danny Webb. Morse helps position Ripley above the furnace, and despite being wounded by Wayland yutani operatives amid the scuffle, is ultimately still alive when taken into their custody. This makes him one of the few characters in the series to encounter both a xenomorph and Wayland yutani and seemingly live to tell about it, despite not being mentioned in any subsequent film. Though you might assume that he was simply interrogated, killed and disposed of by Wayland yutani the wider canon asserts that he was questioned, sent to a C-class prison, and went on to live almost 30 more years before dying of natural causes. Not bad for a character who initially just seemed like another disposable meat puppet. Number 4. Carla Wilson, I Still Know What You Did Last Summer I Still Know What You Did Last Summer's Carla Wilson is an especially interesting example because she's actually a two-time survivor. Despite seemingly being teed up for a brutal death at the end of the original film I Know What You Did Last Summer, being a black woman, protagonist, Julie's best friend, and played by a high-profile singer, she made it out in one piece. It didn't seem likely that success would strike twice though, and even if you've seen the critically panned sequel, your memory might be a little spacey about her outcome. You may remember that mere minutes from the end of the movie, Carla gets attacked by the fisherman and slammed through a glass window. You might have forgotten though, that Carla improbably shows up back at the hotel the next morning once the killers have been dealt with, sporting a mean limp but honestly looking pretty great for someone who nearly got a meat hook through their neck. Number 3. Cameron Elam, Halloween 2018 2018's Halloween quasi-reboot sequel was such a breath of fresh air that many fans forgot about a character whose fate was left suspiciously up in the air. During the movie, Laurie Strode's granddaughter Allison is cheated on by her drunken knob nugget of a boyfriend Cameron. This is all set up in such a way that the audience is led to assume he'll be one of Michael Myers' victims, allowing viewers to relish an A-grade asshole getting his grisly comeuppance. But Cameron basically disappears out of the movie shortly after his infidelity is exposed and is implied to have survived the night. This was later confirmed by a deleted scene which shows Cameron being arrested after insulting a pair of cops, inadvertently saving his own life by mouthing off and spending the night in the cells. Curiously though, Cameron will reportedly be reappearing in the upcoming sequel Halloween Kills, and considering how much fans hated his character, it's looking pretty damn likely he'll get an excessively violent death. Or if director David Gordon Green really wants to troll fans, it'll become a running joke that Cameron keeps improbably surviving. Wait and see. Number 2. Joel Jones, Scream 2 it's often mentioned that the Scream franchise is one of the few major horror IP to keep all of its principal characters alive. Sydney, Dewey, and Gale have made it through all four released movies. But amid the carnage is the easily forgotten case of Joel Jones, Gale's cameraman in Scream 2, who quite sensibly decides to peace out of Woodsboro after Randy is slaughtered inside Gale's broadcast van. Joel gets the hell out of Dodge at the end of the second act and returns for a whole 15 seconds right at the end to help Gale shoot a segment. Apart from that though, he's never heard from again. Joel's survival is especially interesting given that he was originally written to die, but after the film script leaked online during production, his fate was changed through rewrites. Despite being one of the smartest characters in this series, Joel rarely gets his dues. Number 1. Will Rollins, Freddy vs Jason A small number of characters have managed to survive the wrath of Freddy Krueger over the course of the franchise, and while we all remember the likes of the indomitable Nancy Thompson, what about Will Rollins? Anybody? In Freddy vs Jason, Will, played by Jason Ritter, is the ex-boyfriend of protagonist Laurie Campbell, and pretty uninteresting as male leads go. That's not Ritter's fault, Will just isn't written to be remembered, and as the romantic interest of the final girl, he's pretty unlikely to leave the movie alive, right? Though you'd be forgiven for forgetting, Will does actually crawl his way to the end, even if it's Laurie who does the heavy lifting where survival is concerned namely chopping Freddy's head off with Jason's machete. Laurie at least has enough personality to be familiar to fans despite hardly being one of the Elm Street series' great protagonists. But Will? Dull as dishwater. And that's our list. 
What other horror movie survivors have faded into the background? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and swing on by our channel again if you want to catch more creepy content. I've been Tilly and this has been What Culture. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to keep on looking after yourselves. Until next time.